They celebrated Tom Landry Day in Dallas with a parade that said farewell to one of football's kings. But the trumpets that sounded so triumphant now blew taps only a few short months before. The last two seasons were grisly ones for Landry, who saw the once great Dallas dynasty collapse. A storied history became a sad soap opera. And on February 25th, 1989, the team was sold and Landry was fired. Y'all, you look like you're in pretty good shape. You're dressed for the occasion. You look pretty sharp, too. The funeral? <laughs> doesn't show his, his emotions very much, but you know that he has those emotions. And I guess the greatest emotion uh, was his last day with the Cowboys when he went in to uh, talk to the team. And uh, now I'd do it. You never know how many fouls <laughs> you have, boy, when you try to clean them out. 29 years in cardboard boxes. Boxes filled with X's and O's that once sprung to life in his hands, becoming plays and people, and yielding a legacy of victory unsurpassed in the NFL. Landry was both a teacher and oracle, part Einstein, part Nostradamus. A man who could predict events before they happened. If there are geniuses in coaching, he would have to be recognized as one of them because he was very innovative. The multiple offensive sets, the motions, the shifting, he pioneered in that area. Brilliant tactician, a coach that handled the game itself extremely well with his play calling and his direction. In a sense, ahead of his time for many years, offensively and defensively. One of those coaches that knew every position and could really coach every position. Tom Landry was one of the few coaches who coached both sides of the ball. Tom Landry was a great innovator. He was one of the architects of the 4-3 defense. He came up with the multiple offense. Tom Landry's contribution in the history of football will go down along with Paul Brown and George Hallis and Clark Chauncey as one of the, one of the great contributors. Sometimes you'd have a hard time on Mondays remembering whether you won the game or you lost the game because he wanted perfection. You know, he was pretty good uh, second guesser to his coaches. You know, from time to time he would walk by me and he'd say, uh, <clears throat> What have we got to call? And I said, Coach, we're going to blitz. He said, You can't blitz on this. Mm -hmm. You know, and he would leave and come back. He said, What do y'all got to call? I said, Coach, we're going to play 42 42 48. You can't do <laughs> He was so smart that it was hard for him to let somebody else be right. He wanted to do his way all the time. His way revealed little emotion. Where others erupted like Vesuvius, his volcanoes were facial twitches. In 1972, Roger Staubach threw two touchdown passes in 90 seconds to climax a spectacular comeback victory over the 49ers in the playoffs. While everyone was swept away on a high tide of happiness, the captain of this ship stood steady at the helm. And the players were uh, uh, somewhat in awe of him, and I think he wanted it that way because uh, I think he felt to be a leader, you couldn't be real close to the players. A strong leader like, like Landry, uh, you, you do fear him at times, and when you do have some maybe fear or an overwhelming respect for coach, when he tells you something, you listen. Sometimes, even higher authorities listened as a Hail Mary became an answered prayer. But the most heavenly music was always sweet victory as Landry won consistently over three decades. He won with players that were courageous and others who were simply outrageous. Times changed, but Landry remained constant. While he changed styles of hats, victory was always in fashion. 
Under Landry's glow, the Cowboys lit up scoreboards and generated an NFL record 20 straight winning seasons. The Cowboys were so popular they became known as America's Team, and Tom Landry became as recognizable as Walter Cronkite. Thomas Wade Landry achieved all a football coach could possibly achieve. He had eclipsed a sport, and it seemed he would roam the Dallas Cowboys sidelines forever. At least you know, I anticipate what, what's going to happen now with nothing to do. When I get up in the morning, I don't know what I'm going to do. Because I, that's the first time in many, many years that I got up that I didn't have really something to do at that time. Tom was dignity, poise, character. We're in a highly volatile profession, and, and we need examples of, of the right way to do it. Tom always did it the right way. I think he's brought a dignity and a nobility to the coaching profession. The kind of person I think that football can look on and say that this is a great example of, of what we produce. Here's a guy who lived his life according to, you know, the simple rule of God, family, and job. He didn't come in and talk to you or give you a Bible verse or quote scripture or do any of those type things. It was just the way he lived his life. And to see a person that was at peace with himself, regardless of what the situation was, you could be on top of a mountain with a Super Bowl win, or you could be in a, a valley of, you know, having a long losing streak, but he seemed to take things in stride.